Good evening. My name is Aaron Sievers, and I welcome you to Christo Rey Jesuit High School Stand Up for Students event. Thank you for welcoming me onto your screens for tonight's virtual celebration. Everyone you'll meet tonight has their own Christo Rey story. Mine started in 2015 with my first day of high school at our campus on South Chester Street. Now that I've graduated, I'm able to look back on my time at Christo Rey and appreciate all the opportunities that I had there and how it shaped me into the person that I am today. I've always been an ambitious person and Chris Ray fostered that within me. During my time as a student, I interned at McDonough School, Bon Secours, and Stiefel Nicholas. I also joined peer ministry and learned to use my voice to advocate for social justice. My junior year, I campaigned for and won class president. I applied and earned acceptance to 10 colleges where I now am a student and sophomore at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. Here, I'm using my God-given talents and abilities to help others find their own. This is my story so far, but there are 350 students at Christo Rey right now who are not done crafting their own. As you experience tonight's event and hear from some of our current students, I hope that you'll consider standing with them so that they too can pursue their ambitions. But first, Father Rick, will you help us kick off tonight's event with a prayer? Thanks, Aaron. I'd be honored to offer a prayer. And please, as we pray, feel very welcome and encouraged to pray in the faith tradition in which you root your soul. Many of us begin in the Catholic tradition in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for everyone who makes Christo Rey Jesuit in Baltimore a place of life and learning, hope and healing, promise and presence of your power and love in our lives. This evening we join together to support young people. It is obvious that the youth of today are the adults of tomorrow. Their formation in faith and their preparation to take their place in society give the gift of lives filled with meaning and purpose. As we focus our time, talent, and treasure this evening, we listen to the mantra of Christo Rey Jesuit students, fly anyway. Some say hornets should not be able to fly. Their wings are too small, but they fly anyway. Give us the grace to be generous and provide wings for our young scholars at Christo Rey. Many of us ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I understand we have a fun evening to look forward to. Enjoy. Thank you, Father Rick. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Frankie, and this is my wife, Molly. We're honored to be co-chairs of Stand Up for Students. As Aaron put it, our Christo Ray story started about 10 years ago when I was, interestingly enough, waiting to be called for jury duty. Sitting in that big waiting room, I noticed a priest was there as well. I went to a Jesuit school, so I felt naturally compelled to introduce myself and learn more about him. It turned out that Father John Swope was involved in Jesuit education as the new president of a school in Baltimore. A few months later, we attended our first Stand Up For Students event. I was so impressed and moved that night by the students of Cristo Rey Jesuit High School listening to them speak about their work ethic and their commitment to school and learning and hearing about their success through such hard work, all with a touch of humor and humility, really inspired us to get involved. Later, I met Aaron, our MC tonight, at my office at Stiefel. Aaron was an intern there his senior year. Getting to know him showed me firsthand the impact that Christo Ray can have. You may know that Christo Ray is built on a Jesuit education. And you heard from Aaron how that foundation helped mold him into the young man he is today. A Jesuit education is a great building block for any young person to have, which in turn can lead to success in life. So we give to Christo Ray. We give because Christo Ray truly can change the direction of a young person's life. Whether your Christo Ray story started years ago like ours, or if you're here for the first time tonight, we're glad you're here. Once you hear about the success that Christo Ray is having with its students, we hope that you will want to give too. 
Before we move on, I'd like to thank three restaurants who curated the meals for tonight's top sponsors. Thank you to Bar Vasquez, Verde, and Uzo Bay. Restaurants have been hit particularly hard this year. If you are interested in supporting some of your favorite places, please see the restaurant category of tonight's auction to help them out in a creative way. It's easy to pull up the auction on your phone. Just go to crj.cbo.io and log in or click register now. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy the show. I'm Serenity. I am in the 10th grade and I work at McCormick. Crystal Ray is a school that provides like an abundance of opportunities. And the teachers at Crystal Ray, they are, they have a goal in mind. They really want to see us just be better. They, they really just like when we slack off. They just push us and push us until our, so, they, so we can see our potential. They see our potential, but we don't see it yet. So they help us develop it. I like math. English and art. Mr. Shapiro, he's really fun. He let us call him Shorty Butter, which is, which is honestly funny, but I still don't call him Shorty Butter. I, Mr. Shapiro for me. So he just like gives us prompts and we just create. My iPad is pretty much me. It's like what I like to create. We had to draw um, marbles and I drew this. My friend said he thought it was like an actual picture of marbles and I was like, no, it's not. And I drew watch out, like, cause you may slip on marbles. So I tried to draw different things like food and shoes. I'm working on this. It's just a picture, like models, and they were modeling for Vogue. One person in particular, he applied to Harvard and got in. So that's really big for me, and I knew him when he was here. So just seeing that, it just helps me know that if you really want to go to Harvard, you can. I'm pretty sure if you want to go anywhere, you can. So. It's like no, no limits, basically. One of the unique things about Crystal Ray is that more than 100 companies, the ones many of you represent, invest in our school directly. I am pleased to introduce to you one of those organizations and tonight's feature sponsor, Chesapeake Employers Insurance Company. Chesapeake Employers Insurance is proud to be your feature sponsor for tonight's virtual Christo Ray Jesuit High School's fundraiser event, Stand Up for Students. This event provides the funds needed to support the school's mission of helping Baltimore youth succeed in college, career, and life. We applaud your mission, your corporate internship program, and the graduating students who have achieved a 100% acceptance rate to college. Many thanks to the faculty, staff, and family members who have taught, inspired, and motivated these students to achieve at the highest level and prepare them for their future in college and the workplace. So this event is a comedy show, so I should probably tell a joke, right? Okay, well, a man walks into an insurance company. Well, maybe I'll leave the joke telling up to tonight's guest comic, Michael Jr. Please sit back relax and enjoy tonight's event. Thank you, Tom, for Chesapeake Employer Sponsorship. We'd also like to extend our gratitude to tonight's headline sponsors and advocate sponsors. And a big thank you to all of you who are sponsoring tonight's event and to those of you who are tuning in and joining our efforts. Speaking of joining our efforts, 100% of the proceeds from tonight's auction will support CRJ. And there are some wonderful packages that many of you will want to check out. You can join Molly and me in bidding tonight by simply opening your internet browser on your phone or computer and going to crj.cbo.io. Once you register or log in, you'll be able to bid on items. 
like a three night stay in a luxury farmhouse in West Virginia, or tickets to the BMW Classic at Caves Valley this August. And again this year, there's the always popular tickets for courtside seats at the US Open, or this package for eight hours of design services from Winsome Interior Design. Check out all of the great items at the link below. And while I place a few bids, enjoy the next video. My name is Deshaun. I'm a current junior at Crystal Ray, and I work at Loyola University, Maryland, in the athletics department. I'm in the National Honor Society. I'm a current peer minister. Uh, I played basketball for two years, and we won two championships. In the future, I want to be a physical therapist, so my Loyola job in the athletics department actually helps me out amazingly. So during my internship, I used to help like prepare for games, see everything that used to go into it, and then when I had free time, I would go in the training room and watch like uh, athletes get ready for games and get treatment that they needed before they practice. I just love like sports and seeing everybody succeed. Also, I love playing sports. Like I grew up playing sports, basketball, track, baseball. Basically, like physical therapists, they need to study like the body a lot. So that's why like I pay attention heavily in all my physics classes, like my science classes, so I can get that down pack now. So when I get to college, it would be easy. And like if you're committed to something, you're gonna wanna work and it gives you like a drive. That's why like I strive here. Like if you wanna play sports here, you have to have like be great in the classroom too. So like academics before athletics. And that's something that everyone preaches here at Crystal Ray. So my favorite places in the school would be the gym and like the hallways. And because when you walk down the hallways and you look in each classroom, you get to see like nothing but learning going on. Like you just look in and you see all the heads of the students. It's just amazing to watch. The Crystal Ray students, we come from Baltimore, so we already have a lot, facing a lot, but we still manage to come to school, and we all go to school, learn, get our education. If I had to say like one thing, it would be like, thank you, because Crystal Ray is like a life changer for all the students that go here. Good evening. My name is Bill Heiser, and I'm the president of Crystal Ray Jesuit High School here in Baltimore. First, I want to thank Matt and Molly Frankie for your leadership and chairing the Stand Up for Students again this year. We owe you and the Leadership Advisory Council an incredible debt of gratitude. Thank you for sticking with us through all the challenges of the past year. I'm so blessed to have the opportunity to lead this school, to meet all of you, and to work in service to our Crystal Ray students. Crystal Ray Jesuit High School is a special place. Our mission brings together caring people like you and committed organizations to build a better future for our students, our families, and Baltimore. Our model combines an excellent Jesuit high school education with four years of corporate work experience. Every single Crystal Ray student earns a portion of their tuition as an intern. Our students learn real-world skills that complement their studies. They work with professionals who mentor them and help them explore their career aspirations. Quite simply, Crystal Ray Jesuit High School works. Since we opened our doors in 2007, 100% of our graduates have earned acceptance to college. More than 90% on average enroll in a two- or four-year program and we continue to explore ways to prepare all graduates for lifelong learning and a clear path to a rewarding career. This past year has shown me more than ever the commitment people like you have to our school and our students. As we face the challenges of fully remote school year, our teachers created and implemented a new online learning program. As we realize the breadth of the digital divide, People like you stepped up to provide a computer for every single student. As we face the reality that we couldn't send students into the workplace, your companies stood by us. And to fund virtual work, mentoring, and skill building courses. As students struggled, workplace mentors stepped up to offer ongoing support. As we faced a new reality, you reminded us that we weren't doing it alone. That's why I'm excited to share an opportunity for you to join us to make a tangible impact on Krista Ray students. Tonight, a Krista Ray trustee has put forth a matching challenge 
to match every single gift up to $30,000. That means your gift tonight doubles in impact. Please text CRJ to phone number 56651 to help us meet this challenge now. That number again is 56651. Follow the prompts to make your gift to support CRJ. Thank you from all of us at Crystal Ray for your support and commitment. My name is Michelle. I am a senior and I intern at Johns Hopkins Cancer Center. People would say, how can a 14 year old intern there? Because that's so impressive and it's a big opportunity for me. This is my Crystal Ray painting. When I come through Crystal Ray through those doors, I feel very happy and motivated to study because I really enjoy studying. So there's this classroom where it's, it's a biology lab and I really enjoy working there and just being there <laughs> and learn, to learn because it's very nice and I really love the sciences so I would be there studying and I would always look forward to it. I would like to major in health sciences or pre-medicine because I really want to pursue a career in the medical field. I was really inspired thanks to Chris Ray's cor corporate internship program. I applied to 13 colleges and so far 10 of the colleges I got accepted to. I'm just waiting for three more. Thank you so much for helping out and just contributing because I really enjoy coming to Crystal Ray. I am so, so grateful. Thank you so much. Hi again. Since we last spoke, I hope that you've learned a little bit more about Crystal Ray. As an alumnus and a college student, I'm not ready to sponsor this event. That will come one day, but I am giving back in ways that I can. And I hope that you've been moved tonight and will give what you can to help us fill our challenge. And now, without further ado, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the stand-up part of tonight's event. He's brought laughter to the Tonight Show on NBC, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and Comedy Central. He's been a keynote speaker for TED Talks. He stars in the movie Selfie Dad, available now on streaming platforms. And he has just created a course that teaches people about life in a funny way. It is my pleasure to welcome tonight's headline comedian, Michael Jr. You've seen him on the Tonight Show. He's been on TED Talks. You've seen him on Oprah Winfrey. And he's here with you tonight. Put your hands together and welcome to the stage, my man, Michael Jr. Well, hello, Crystal Ray Jesuit High School. We're about to have some fun. This is going to be so cool. This is like stand up for students, like for real. And I'm all about standing up for students. In fact, I'm, a, I'm all about standing up for anybody who wants to learn more than they already know. And that's how you get down. So we get to laugh. We got some fun. But I'm going to challenge you to do something that may seem a little weird at first. But it's actually what you really should do even after this comedy event. Let me break this down for you. Uh, well, first, let's focus on the fact this is a great fundraiser for students. Like, this is really, really cool. I know you're at the crib. I you know you're chilling, you're relaxing, or whatever the case is, and, you, and you're comfortable. Some of y'all in your pajamas. Some of y'all might have a suit on with a tie at home talking about, you know what, I'm, I'm really into this. Whatever you want to do, we're going to have some fun. So I appreciate you for being here. Here's the thing I want to challenge you with. It may be a little different, may seem a little weird, but it's so powerful if you take this even past this comedy show. Here it is. We're about to do this thing referred to as the three levels of laughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three levels of laughter, right? And there's level one, level two, and level three. I don't know if you caught that or not. But here's how the three levels of laughter is going to work. On the count of four, I always do four because anybody count to three, right? I want to I go over and above, right? So on the count of four, I want you to laugh. But I want you to do your level one laugh. Your level one laugh is like a chuckle. There may be a little body movement, but it's like from the shoulders up. So on the count of four, I want you to do that for like five seconds. I know. Seems weird. You're probably thinking to yourself, when she going to say something funny? 
No, 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 no. I'm not going to do anything. You're going to do the work. And it's pretty powerful what I'm going to show you on the other end of this, okay? So for like five to seven seconds, literally, for real, I want you to laugh on the count of four. Let's go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's this laugh right here. <laughs> your chuckle, your chuckle laugh. <laughs> like, so I want you to do this for real. This is very, very important. Good stuff. I appreciate you doing that. Now we're going to go to level two laughter. This is where the upper body is moving, right? From the waist up, like there's movement going on, right? We're going to do this for like five seconds. Trust me when I tell you, you want to do this, okay? For like five seconds. I don't care where you're at. Probably sitting up with your feet up, whatever the case is. Or maybe you're in your car, you just pull over to the side because that's better than driving and looking at a phone. You shouldn't be doing that. This is wrong. Anyway, second level of laughter, right? This is it, right? On the count of four, once you do the big laugh, it's bigger. It's from the waist up and you laugh. <laughs> that's weird. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Here we go. On the count of four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yes, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Two seconds, one second, boom. That's what I'm talking about. Now, at this point, you're probably starting to notice that the laughs are starting to get a little not, um, not so created. What I mean is, is if you're doing this right, you're going to start to feel that the laughs are starting to feel even more real. Yeah, I want to I wanna give you a hint of that right now. Because on this next level, if you do it, you're certainly gonna feel the shift take place. Okay, here it goes. So this is the last level. Your whole body should be involved with this lab. Some of y'all might wanna stand up for this lab. You're gonna be moving all over. <laughs> it's gonna be that lab, the big one. Like that big lab where there may be some little tears at the end of it. If you don't wipe the tears up, you're gonna look like you just woke up and you were asleep and you have one of them little hard, little crunchy, little, eh, that's too much detail, right? Anyway, so this is it. About to count to four. This is the third level of laughter. It's the big one. You're going to bring it. Am I right? A am I right? Okay. Count to four. One, two, three, four. Ha! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you got four more seconds. Three, two. Keep laughing, keep laughing, keep laughing. One. Now, most likely what happened, if you played full out, you felt a shift take place where you really started to enjoy that process, where the laughter became real. Now, what's so powerful about this is I didn't do anything, me on the outside of you, I didn't do anything to cause the laughter, the joy to happen on the inside of you, which means it's actually a really powerful tool that you can use to recognize that you have control where you don't just have to depend on things on the outside to change how you feel on the inside, whether good or bad. They don't have to have the effect that sometimes some people allow them to have. You have more control. I can't get into all of the details of this right now, but trust me, that's the case. If you want to look at some more stuff that I got going on, some teaching, some comedy, some cool stuff, you should do that for sure. But right now, I'm ready to jump into some jokes with you folks. So let's do that right now. No, I do have five kids, and whenever you have a big family, you have to figure out ways to save money, right? We want to get our family pictures taken. That stuff was expensive. So we did to save money, right, as we all got in the front seat of the car, um, <laughs> look both ways and rent a red light. That's what we did. That's what we did. That's what we did. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, two weeks later, the picture came in the mail. <laughs> oh. yeah. But my son blinked, so we had to do it again. So I was doing that joke in prison recently, right? I wasn't in prison like, hey, I'm funny, get off me. It wasn't like that. Um, whenever we're doing a big comedy event, sometimes we'll stop at a homeless shelter, a prison, abuse children's facility. We'll stop there and we'll do some, some comedy for the people, right? So I'm at this prison and I'm doing, why well, do comedy at a prison? Some of y'all looking at me. It's a captive audience. I'm gonna throw it out there. Uh, so we're at this prison and I do the joke about the red light and 75% of the prisoners laugh, the rest of them, nothing. Then I realized what was going on. Some of them had been locked up for so long, the dude next to him had to explain the joke. <laughs> he was like, see, nowadays when you run a red light, they send a picture with a ticket in the mail. Then he looked at the dude next to him and was like, a red light is what they use for traffic when you go down the road. <laughs> and then he said, a road is what they use 
where am I right now? I don't work that hard to find comedy. It just kind of shows up. Um, I took my daughter to get a toddler bed, and uh, it came with a 20-year warranty. I'm just going to wait some years. I'm going to take it back. They're going to be like, what's wrong? I'm going to be like, uh, her feet are hanging off the end. And, and her husband's uncomfortable, too. So. Yeah. Oh, hope you enjoyed that. I'm super excited. I want to give some shout outs to different levels of sponsorship. That's pretty dope. You got features, you got punchliners. I just really like this concept right here. This is doggone awesome. You got the headliners. Man, you guys are great. I really like how this whole thing has been put together. And also know that you got some core values. I really, really enjoy the fact that you guys are all about being open to growth. You're all about um, l lifelong uh, learning. That is great. I mean, being committed to learning is great. I, I really, 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 really like this a lot. So here's what we're about to do too, as well. I know you guys have four values. That's dope. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Michael Jr. I was wondering. And the way this works is you get to ask me any question you want, any question at all. You just have to say, Michael Jr., I was wondering. We told you guys about this ahead of time. Some of you guys actually sent in the videos, and now I get to answer these questions. I've never seen these questions before. You just say, Michael John's wondering, I'll give you a reaction, a response, some comedy or whatnot could be created on the spot. So these are actual questions from your actual people, and I'm actually about to answer them right now. So with that being said, let's jump into some Michael Jr. I was wondering. Michael Jr., I was wondering why my teenage daughters won't listen to me. Oh, yeah, I think it's the second uh, uh, value, really. They don't think you're competent. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. That's probably not it. The reason your teenage daughters won't listen to you is because uh, the first part of your question, teenage daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what some of them do. That's, that's kind of their job. That's kind of what teenage means, unfortunately. But here's what I will tell you as a dad. Just because it seems like they're not listening doesn't mean they don't want you to continue to talk to them. Like they really are craving your, uh, they're craving for you to listen, for you to be concerned. Like they really, really, really want that. A child lives for their father's uh, validation. But when they're older, they live from their father's validation. Kaboom! Wow. Thought it was just going to be funny. I did too, until I just came up with that. Boom. Next question. Michael Jr., I was wondering, as a man who's similar uh, hairstyle, ball by choice or uh, otherwise? Thanks. Oh, well, I let the Lord cut my hair, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be doing it myself. God cut it, right? I just had to trim up the sides. He did everything else. So you know you know what that means, right, bro? Yeah, I think you know. But I could grow it out if I want. If I want, I could grow it out. Like, wait, I could, like, I could easily, just, if I wanted a whole, like, a whole jerry curl or something, I could do that. Just have to buy it. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks. Thanks, bro, for pointing that out. Appreciate it. Boom. Next question. My name is Bill Heiser. I'm the president at Krista Ray Jesuit High School here in Baltimore. Michael Jr., I was wondering, what was your favorite class in high school, and who was your favorite teacher? Thank you. Oh, yeah, my favorite class in high school. We had a class called uh, uh, Dismissal. I think that's how they pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dismissal. That was my favorite class. It was, a, it was the class after the last class, and we would go home. <laughs> no, I did have a favorite teacher, though. My favorite teacher was uh, this guy named Mr. George. And every time I go back to my hometown of Grand Rapids and I'm on stage, I always tell people about Mr. George, but nobody can find this dude. Like, nobody can find him. I think he might have been Jesus. Because he, he helped me out a lot for a time. And then when I wanted to thank him, he was gone. But so now I'm looking for him like a, well, I'm not like looking for him. Have you seen him? Tell me. It's not like that. But he was a great teacher. He really impacted me a lot. I had some other teachers who impacted me a lot too, but not in the same direction. <laughs> great question, dude. And that's a nice haircut. Next question. Hey, Michael Jr. My name is Colleen. I've watched your What vs. Why video so many times. So I was wondering, at what point in your career did you realize that you could also use your comedy to inspire your audience? Wow. You know what? Great question. Um, I, I know exactly when it was. It was a, a night outside of a club in Los Angeles, California. I went up on stage like I normally do to ask the question, how can I get laughs? 
right? That was the question that was running in the back of my head. And I shifted it to how can I give people an opportunity lab? As soon as I made that shift, everything changed. Everything opened up because now I'm not looking to take, I'm looking for an opportunity to give. So even that in the video that you saw where, where I'm talking to Daryl Duff and I look around, I'm in the audience literally saying, what can I give to this audience? As, and that's why I picked him. Literally, that's why I picked him because I was asking a different question as opposed to just trying to see what I could get. So when you make that shift in whatever your career is, you're gonna start seeing some completely different things like in a significant way. So great question. That was awesome. Thanks for using that, the Know Your Why video too. I appreciate that much. Boom. Michael Jr., who are your favorite comedians? Who are the guys that you looked up to, studied, and liked the most? Wow, it's a great question, Jim Carrey. I would say, uh, I didn't really, it's weird. I didn't really study a lot of comedy before I got into comedy. I think it's because I, instinctively, I needed to get my own voice. But with some of the people who really made me laugh a lot, my dad is hysterical, got a great sense of humor. I also used to watch, uh, um, Oh, I like Brian Regan is funny. Ellen DeGeneres is really funny as well. And then Dave Chappelle is hysterical too. Those are some great comedians. So thanks, man. Great question. Great question. Next question. Hey, Michael Jr. I was wondering, since I'm the director of mission and ministry at Cristo Ray Jesuit High School and a Jesuit priest, what's the funniest God joke you ever heard? Thank you. The funniest God joke I ever heard? Hey, man, I don't mess around with God like that, bro. I don't know what you got going on. No, I'm just playing. So the funniest God joke I ever heard. Oh, 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 right. So somebody walked up. I'm making this up on the spot. Somebody walked up to the pearly gates, right? And then it was like, knock, knock. Right? And then it was like, knock, knock. And nobody answered because their name wasn't on the list. <laughs> It's awesome. And then somebody pulled a rug and then they went under, they went down and it was burning up hot. Hey, you got a nice beard. Next question. Hi, Michael Jr. This is John Bussey. I'm the director of the corporate internship program here at Cristo Ray. And I was wondering when you first knew you were funny. Oh, when did I first know I was funny? The first time somebody laughed? <laughs> like for real, actually I was like nine years old and I grew up in a household where you couldn't just tell people like you couldn't just talk when grown folks was talking, right? So, and I couldn't be disrespectful. To, yeah, so, yeah. I couldn't be disrespectful to adults. So I, I kind of had to watch it and I felt like I knew something was gonna be funny. So I had to pose it in, a, in, in, a, in the form of a question. And I remember thinking, I'm nine years old. I wonder if I say this like this, would it be funny? And I said that thing like that and it was funny. So nine years old is when I kind of knew. I didn't know what I would do with it. I didn't know how I would use it but I kind of knew that I had something there. Great question, dude, really good question. Boom, with that being said, that is how we play Michael Jr. I was wondering. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for being amazing. Let's do this. Let's jump back into some more jokes. Yo, any coaches here? Anybody coach anything on any level? Anybody coach anything? What do you coach? Baseball. baseball. Cool, how long you coach baseball? 30 years, you're not done yet? <laughs> what do you do when you're not coaching? Ball, cool. Anyway. So you've been coaching for 30 years. So as a coach, have you ever said this or something like this? Have you ever looked at your team and said, listen, the stuff I'm teaching you here is not just about this game. You can apply it to life. You ever say that? Exactly. Here's the thing about that statement, coach. It's not true. I need you to stop saying it immediately. Let me explain. Straight out of high school, I got a job parking cars. One of the cars was really nice, so I took it for a little spin. Company found out my boss lost the account. He was yelling at me, screaming. I didn't know what to say or do. I thought back to my high school football coach. I looked at my boss, I was like, you know what, man? You win some, you lose some, man. You can't let this one loss get you down. Listen, the important thing is I went out there and I had fun. And people will ask me sometimes, Michael Jr., what makes you laugh? What makes me laugh most, really, is uh, awkwardness. Did you feel it just now? Did you feel it? Like, I'll look for awkwardness. Like, I'll get on an elevator when there's like six or seven people in there. I'll let the door close behind me, and I won't turn around.
And then I'll say something random like, my shoes are on upside down. And then everyone gets off on the next floor. And then I just giggle my way to the top. It's so much fun. Another thing I do, right? You gotta try this, this is so much fun. Like, I'll use a phrase the right way that most people use the wrong way and creates awkwardness and it's so much fun. Let me explain. So I walk up to somebody I don't know. I never met him before in public from a little distance. I walk up to him and I'll say, hey there, stranger. <laughs> Haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> then I just walk off, I just walk off. I'm telling you, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. It'll be awkward at first, when you go home, you'll be crying. Like, it is the best, it's the best. Yo, something else I did like, so I grew up in Michigan, right? I grew up in Michigan, and it's cold in Michigan, right? Now I live in Dallas, right? And recently, um, recently I found one of my old ski masks, right? <laughs> my old ski masks, right? Um, and I like awkwardness and stuff, man. So, uh, so I just started walking around Dallas with a ski mask on, man. I'm not, I'm not gonna rob anybody, that's just wrong. I just got a ski mask on, right? I just got a ski mask on. Went to the bank, too, <laughs> went to the bank, went to the bank. Um, Again, I'm not gonna rob anybody. I'm in line like everybody else. Hey, little girl, how you doing? Cool. <laughs> Reason I went to the bank is because, like, what they gonna do? Have you seen the security guards at the bank? <laughs> it's like one extreme or another. Some young dude, pimples on his face. He really an insecurity guard. <laughs> or it's like a super old dude with like six hearing aids. A social security guard. And they never got a gun. They never got a gun. They got a walkie-talkie. You know a security guard. You a tattletale. That's what you are. You're a grown man tattletale. That's what you are. Yo, what about this one, right? You ever be on a job interview and partway through you realize, huh, I don't want to work here. Yo, at that point, don't bail on the interview. You should have fun. Flip the whole interview. They say something like, so tell me a little bit about yourself. You're like, you know what? You go first. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Where do you see me in five years? Because <laughs> they always ask those weird questions. They ask questions like, uh, they'll say, so tell me about a time you had a disagreement with a coworker, and then tell me how you worked it out. Like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a colleague who actually took credit for some work I did. Like, they didn't do anything on a project. I fully did it, and they took all the credit. So what I did, right, I walked over to their cubicle, right? Um, and then uh, fast forward, uh, here I am, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I so enjoyed doing comedy. I gotta be real with you. When I first started doing comedy, it was all about getting laughs from people. Like, for real. Most comedians will tell you if they can articulate it. When you get on stage, it's all about getting laughs. But I had a shift in mindset take place. One time right before I got on stage at a club in Hermosa Beach, uh, California, I'm, getting, I'm about to get on stage and I had this shift take place. I felt like instead of going up there to get laughs from people, I was supposed to go up there and give them an opportunity to laugh. Like this changed everything. Like literally because I changed the question, it changed everything. Cause now I'm not looking to take, I'm just looking for an opportunity to give. I remember getting on stage that night, we had a great time it was, I was much more relaxed. I was so much more relaxed. I really believe when you have a gift, your job is simply to present the gift. And then those who want it, they can receive it or not, but, but the pressure's off you either way. Anyway, I leave the club that night and I remember walking outside and I'm taking pictures and with people and we're doing autographs and there's a guy across the street that I'd never seen before. It's a homeless guy. I performed at that club many, many times before, but I'd never seen him before. But that doesn't mean he wasn't there before. That doesn't mean there wasn't at least some homeless person in that area before, but what it means is my mindset was different. I was asking the question, how can I get laughs? So why would I even notice a homeless person? But under this circumstance, I noticed him and my question popped up and I was like, how could I give him an opportunity to laugh? And this changed everything. This is why we went on ahead and started our, uh, the nonprofit we have called Funny for the Forgotten. Like we literally started that and taking comedy to those places as a result of a change in mindset. So listen, I'd like to explain to you how life works, at least from a comedian's perspective. First there's a setup and then there's a punchline. 
See, your setup is your talents, your resources, and your opportunities. And most of the time, we use our setup to ensure that the people around us are moving in a direction that serves us, which means the punchline occurs when you change that direction in a way they're not expecting. You actually use your setup for other people. The results are the same yet multiplied. It's revelation, it's fulfillment, and it's joy. But it's not just for the one receiving your punchline. It's also for you who get to deliver the punchline as well. If I asked the question, what is your setup? Chances are all of you would be able to tell me. Because your setup is the fact that you got a house, you got a car. You, your setup is about what you received. But what if I asked you the question, what is your punchline? Because your punchline is about what you're called to deliver. And if you know your setup, which we all do, but you don't know your punchline, you'll realize that something's missing. And what you'll try to do to fill that void is you'll think you need more setup. But what you really need to do, you need to know what is your punchline. And please understand, just like me struggling with my reading as a child, your setbacks are part of your setup so you can deliver the punchline you're called to deliver. Much like a slingshot, the further you've been set back, the further you're going to reach. But you have to know what to aim for. It is funny how life works. You have something amazing to deliver. You do, and the people around you need you to deliver it. So take a moment and ask yourself, what is my setup and what punchline can I deliver today? I'm Michael Jr. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm out. And that's our show. Before we end tonight, we'd like to say a personal thank you to all of the LAC members who worked diligently to make this event a reality. And if you haven't already, please take these final moments to make a gift to Crystal Ray. You can pledge your gift on your phone by texting CRJ to phone number 56651 or by simply clicking the link below. By giving tonight, you are doubling your contribution and in turn, your impact to Cristo Ray. Thank you all so much. Aaron, take it away. Thanks again for welcoming us into your homes for tonight's event. I know that some of tonight's sponsors are enjoying a pint of Taharka's Brothers ice cream. And as we end tonight's program, it's definitely time to treat yourself to dessert. Thank you to tonight's sponsors, event volunteers, and to all of you for being part of our Crystal Ray story. Good night, everyone.